Hello everybody, Craig Lieberman coming back at you with another episode. There's no doubt that the cars from the Fast and Furious franchise have been rising in value in recent years. Since Paul's death and as the franchise has grown over the years, values have gone up dramatically. In 2015, one of the movie Supras, a non-turbo automatic car with a stripped interior, sold for $180,000. The wreck Dodge Charger from the first movie sold for $85,000, and I don't want to tell you what the Hero One car went for. Jesse's Jetta sold not long ago for $90,000. The 2009 370Z driven by Gail Godot and owned personally by Paul Walker sold for $105,000. And so it goes. Prices keep rising for the truly collectible cars, which are the cars driven by Paul and Vin, which are especially valuable. So here's a look at what we paid for these cars. Spoiler alert, it's a lot less than you might have thought. And we'll also look at how much you would need to spend to buy one of these screen used cars today. So strap yourself in and let's go for a little ride. Starting with the first movie, let's talk about some of the main cars. The Honda Civics were fan favorites. Everybody loved this scene. We actually bought seven of those cars to do that scene. Prices range from 8,500 to 10,400. Grand total for all of them, all in, we paid $63,050. To buy one of those cars today, you'll pay around eight to 10,000 if you can find one of the screen used cars. If you can find one complete, it would easily be a $30,000 car. Dom's RX-7 will set you back quite a bit more. The Hero One car was rented from a private owner for $8,600, that's what we paid. There were four more RX-7s built, each costing between $15,900 and $17,200. The grand total for all of this, $74,800. If you wanted to buy one of these cars today, they'd easily be over $80,000 for a Junker, assuming it was a complete car. And the Hero cars would be hundreds of thousands of dollars. With Brian's Eclipse, we had seven of these cars, and we paid prices ranging from $12,000 to $16,800. The Hero One was rented to us for only $8,600. All in, we spent $70,600. The few examples that still exist in movie condition range in values. A strip car sold not long ago for about $40,000, but a fully intact car today would be worth six figures, no problem. Brian's Supra, when we did that car, we had eight of these, and prices ranged from free to 24,000 bucks. The grand total we spent for all of these cars was $111,674.33 which includes $9,900 from my rental and $15,000 to repaint it after I got it back. To buy one of those cars today would cost you more than $200,000 easy. With Letty's 240SX, only three were used. One was a rental, and the total cost for all three cars was $28,200. A screen used car today would set you back probably $50,000 if it was completely intact, and if it was the Hero Car, hundred grand. Jesse's Jetta? We had three of those, one of which was also a rental. All in all, we spent $31,850 for the Jettas. And again, as I said, this car sold for $90,000 not long ago, which is crazy because it cost less than half of that to build three of them. Again, it is a seller's market. Edwin's Integra, again, the Hero One car was rented from a private owner. And this one cost us $4,500 to rent it. And we bought one backup car for $11,500. Total bill, all in, fifteen dollars Edwin's Integra was offered for sale a few years ago at 80,000 bucks. It eventually sold for an undisclosed amount, but you can bet a car like that will be easily north of 100,000 today. The two Ford Lightnings were actually provided to us from Ford at no charge. One of those cars today would probably be worth about 40 grand. Leon's R33 GTR was loaned to the production for free by the now defunct Motorex. If this car were around today, it would sell for over $150,000 without breaking sweat. Stock ones are selling for 80 grand. Mia's Integra was also a rental, but we have to include the cost to repaint the car back the way it was. So the total bill for the rental and paint was 9,200 bucks. Vince's Maxima was a $5,000 rental. Damage repairs cost about 3,200 bucks. So there was 8,200 bucks into the car. There were no backups and this car recently sold for about $65,000. But since it's one of one, that car would be worth hundred grand or more today. Danny Yamato's white Civic is a whole nother story. We bought the Hero One car for $99.50 and also purchased a $10,000 backup car for stunts. The total bill, $19,950. You could build an exact replica of this car for about eight grand all in, or you can buy the movie car for about $60,000. Hector's green and gold Civic, only one was needed, and so it too was rented, and this time we paid $6,500 for it. This car was for sale a, a few years ago for about 30 grand, and it has since disappeared. The grand total for buying and building all of these cars comes out to $433,124.33. <laughs> 
The Dodge Chargers, though, are not counted in these totals because that deal was negotiated outside of the picture car department. So no information on those cars ever came across my desk. However, I did hear a few things. What I heard was that Ray Claridge, who runs Cinema Vehicle Services, provided the five chargers that we needed. At that time, it was my understanding that the, each car was valued around $40,000. Factoring all of this in, the cars for the first movie cost a total of $633,124.33 just to buy or acquire their cars, whether they were rentals or purchases. These totals do not include the cost of the parts that we added to each of the cars. If you remember, each car received a different group of styling and performance parts, so the totals would vary from platform to platform. For Too Fast, Too Furious, it was a completely different situation. While there were only 48 cars used in the first movie, the second movie had 194 movie cars, four times the number of the cars of the Fast and Furious original movie. Many of the cars in the first movie were repainted and reused again in this movie. Cars like the Supras, one of the RX-7, some of the Eclipses, and the Hondas were reused for background cars. So that's saved us hundreds of thousands of dollars. But still, we racked up a hefty bill. Only 98 cars, though, were actually purchased for that movie, and the rest were either loaned to the production for free or donated by manufacturers. Starting with the Skyline GTRs, my car was rented to the production for $12,000, we went out and bought four more from Motorex for 48,000 bucks a piece and bought another one from England for about $52,000. That's $256,000 just for GTRs. We bought 24 police cars for $9,000 each for a total of $460,000. We had eight 69 Camaros. Prices range from 1,500 bucks for shells to $24,000 for cars that were intact or mostly intact. Grand total was about $96,000 and change. We had six Dodge Challengers that ranged in price from $1,500 for a bare shell, all the way up to about $21,000 for a nearly complete car. In total, we spent $63,700 getting those cars. We also had four Shelby Cobra replicas built, but didn't end up using them, so they were sold to Charlie's Angels full throttle. Each of those cars cost about $45,000. That makes another $180,000. The Vipers were donated by Dodge, as were the pickup trucks, so there was no expenditure for the acquisition of those vehicles. The Mitsubishi Evos and Eclipse Spiders were also donated, this time by Mitsubishi Japan and Mitsubishi North America. The Celine Mustangs were not real Celine Mustangs, although we did have one real car. The others were V6 Mustangs or GTs, and at least one came without a drivetrain. So another $71,500 was spent to acquire these cars. If you add it all up, that's $1.15 million just for some of the main cars that you'll see in that movie. In total, the picture car budget for this movie was $7 million. For the first movie, the total picture car budget was about $2 million. This is a big difference. So how much would it cost you to get in one of these movie cars if you wanted to buy one today? The original Hero 1 Super sold for nearly $200,000 in 2000, but the current owner has turned down offers of over a million dollars. So if you wanted to build your own replication of that car, just buying the car would be expensive. Decent used turbo supers are selling today for north of $80,000. Add about another $30,000 in parts, another 10 grand for the paint job, and for the low, low price of about $120,000, you could be ready for a stoplight Grand Prix on Pacific Coast Highway. If you wanted to buy one of the GTRs used in the second movie, today showroom stock GTRs are selling for over $150,000. The current owner of the movie GTR valued his car at $1.5 million in 2019. Building that car today to movie spec would cost you well over $225,000. So if you want to go legit and buy an actual screen used movie car you better have extremely deep pockets and if you want to build an exact replica you better have deep pockets and extreme patience so what car would you build or buy tell us in the comments and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching everybody i'll catch you next time